Hey YouTube and welcome to Tech Bump. Today I'm going to show you how to game on a Mac. Give me a chance to show you that it's possible and I really mean that. Then after, let me know in the comments below what you think. What you have to do is put together an external graphics card, aka an eGPU. So here's what I did. I took my MacBook Air 13 inch early 2014 and paired it with an EVGA GTX 1050 Ti. Now you normally are unable to do this unless you have an Akidio Thunder 2 PCIe expansion box. Just so you know, the Akidio 2 comes with a weak power supply, which will be inadequate for this setup. Therefore, I recommend getting a hold of one of these, an eFreesia 120 watt power supply adapter. You do not necessarily need the same one, as long as you mind the DC barrel plug size, which is 2.5 by 5.5 millimeter, and that it's capable of 120 watts. With this, you won't need a Dell DA2 220 watt or 400 watt plus PC power supply as seen in many eGPU tutorial videos on YouTube. I will leave the Amazon links to where you can purchase these in the description below, so feel free to acquire them however you want. I just want to put it there to make it easier for everyone. Moving on, this is what we'll be doing. We will open up our enclosure and you'll notice both the board and PCIe slot. Go ahead and carefully install your GTX 1050 Ti. Take your power supply adapter's DC barrel plug and plug it in the back. That will pretty much serve both the Akidio Thunder 2 and graphics card at the same time. Here's why this works. The PCIe slot is only capable of delivering 75 watts, no more. Secondly, this particular graphics card has a maximum TDP of 75 watts. Thirdly, there is no need for an additional power connector either. For anyone concerned about powering the Akidio Thunder 2, I've had this setup for over 6 months without a single power issue. Although we have power covered, you need to understand what connects the Akidio Thunder 2 to your Mac device. Here's a picture of my MacBook Air from the right hand side. There is a technology called Thunderbolt which serves a wide variety of purposes, but for our case we'll be using it for our Mac device to recognize the graphics card. I indicate to you on the screen what a Thunderbolt port looks like in the yellow ring. The plug looks similar to this drawing I made on the left, but be warned, do not mistake this for a mini display port. They literally have identical looking plugs, but you can distinguish them by looking at the symbols. Mini display port is only capable of outputting a video signal. So if you only have mini display port, you will be unable to run the setup. Make sure in advance that your device is compatible with Thunderbolt 1 or 2. You can do this by checking Apple's website and looking up the specifications of your Mac computer. Warnings aside, graphics cards need high bandwidths. Thunderbolt 1 runs at 10 gigabits per second versus Thunderbolt 2 which is double that. I highly recommend running this setup on Thunderbolt 2 if you can help it. Another thing you need to know is Nvidia Optimus. According to Odd One Out, Nvidia drivers version 361.75 and up support running a graphics card over Thunderbolt in Windows 10. If necessary, Make sure to update or download the latest ones from the official website. In a nutshell, NVIDIA Optimus backfeeds whatever the graphics card processes through Thunderbolt into the internal display. What this means is you won't always necessarily need an external monitor. This also requires Intel HD graphics to be enabled. In some rare instances, some eGPU setups are unable to accomplish this because they have to disable Intel HD graphics for the computer to recognize the dedicated graphics. I will eventually cover this in another video, but this is there for your knowledge. Since the setup can run on the internal screen, the setup is entirely mobile. I literally can put the MacBook and the Kitty of Thunder 2 into my backpack. But if you have an external monitor ready, plug your eGPU into it via HDMI and pump up the graphics. Since the graphics card will not need to backfeed, there is actually a performance gain. This means you can game on the go and when you come home, the experience for gaming only gets better. Don't sweat too much on the performance just yet. I will show you benchmarking I did in Overwatch real soon. Now that you know what you're working with, here's what I advise you not to do. Some people like to take their enclosure and slice it so they can put a card which otherwise should not fit and put together special wiring that will power both the graphics card power connector and the DC barrel plug at the same time by using a bulky PSU. It's not that this is the wrong way to do it, but that method is unfriendly to people who are not tech inclined. So 
no offense to anyone who has achieved this. In fact, I congratulate you because you know what you're doing. But for people like me, let's keep things simple, yeah? So listen in, this is my checklist. Do not alter the enclosure. You're spending 200 plus dollars on the Kitty of Thunder 2, so don't damage it. You're also putting together the special wiring that makes it messy and you'd be doing way more complicated things than you bargained for. Lastly, I've noticed there tends to be a misconception with gamers that believe people who play on Macs game on the Mac OS. No, that's not how we do it. We game on a Mac computer that has Windows installed. So then, how do you get Windows installed on a Mac? Now, bear with me, this guide is intended to be simple. Therefore, I will not walk you through the bootcamp process if you're unfamiliar with it. Just know that Macs have a program which support this purpose. And prepare yourself with an 8GB flash drive. I'll be leaving a card at the top right about now by Techno Buffalo, which nails how to do it in a matter of 4 minutes or so. Click on it, watch the guide, tell them I said hi, and come back when you're ready. Don't forget I have benchmarking coming up. For those it applies to, welcome back, or thanks for staying. Let's wrap things up. Why should you do this? Well, you have the ability to dual boot. For me, I actually do iPhone development, so I prefer to work in a Mac environment, but I like to game on PC too. Take a look at the power consumption. I don't know the actual wattage used, but everything together has to be under 150 watts total, the Mac and eGPU. Your wallet will probably feel better in the long run. The whole setup for me costs about $600. It won't for you, but if you have the chance to snag a recent MacBook with Thunderbolt for under $400 like I did, go for it. And imagine this, walk into a LAN party with one of these. Now, my last point is, maybe you're a college student already stuck with a MacBook. Building a computer is an option to game, but I like to work with what I have already. Besides. You can put the setup away safely, unlike with PCs, you have to leave them out unattended, especially if you dorm. So, alright guys, I promised you benchmarks, so here they come. After benchmarking, I'll show you how to physically install the graphics card into the enclosure. And here we have it. On the top, I have the specs of my machine, and on the right hand side, I made a guide to what resolutions I benchmarked on. Just remember that NVIDIA Optimus is ran on the internal display whereas the other two are done on an external monitor. So here are the average FPS I got on the medium, high, and ultra presets on Overwatch with Thunderbolt 1. And I'm impressed. This is not even Thunderbolt 2. Let me know in the comments down below how this compares to your own rig. But just remember that Thunderbolt 2 doesn't mean double the performance of Thunderbolt 1, just expect it to be higher. Anywho, I'm going to go ahead and show you some gameplay and shut up for a little bit, but afterwards I'm going to show you how to in physically install the graphics card into the Kiddo Thunder 2. Stay tuned. So here we have it, the Kiryu Thunder 2. I'll stay silent when I want to, but I'll explain where I should. So this is the back, and there's two Thunderbolt 2 ports. And there's thumb screws on the top and bottom. And that's where you put the DC barrel plug. So with the thumb screws, they're special kind of screws. You don't need a Phillips head screwdriver. Just go ahead and twist them clock counterclockwise. I 
go ahead and twist it here and carefully pull out the front of it. So I'll give you a better look at what the PCIe slot looks like and that there's a small fan on the right. Remember that there's more thumb screws to do and a bracket. You're going to have to take out the bracket in order to install the GTX 1050 Ti. So hold with one hand the bracket and unscrew with the other. Don't forget to take out the other thumb screw as well. So here's the GTX 1050 Ti. You'll notice there's no power connector on it. So I'm just being real careful here. I'm gonna go ahead and use two hands, one finger on each hand and push it down. I kind of shimmy it to the right, then the left, and it makes a nice clicking sound. I know it's secure. I'll show you the thumb screw holes. That's how it should be lined up, as well as how the card should be fitted into the PCIe slot. Now, don't forget to put the thumb screws back or else it'll wobble. All right, and let's close this up. So I carefully lift the enclosure. And just remember, don't try to force the front part of it in. Lift it up slightly so that it can go in snug. Now, be careful about carrying the Akidio 2 because if you don't redo the thumb screws in the back, you might actually drop the front part and there goes your graphics card. So here I show you the outputs for the display. I'm going to go ahead and take the HDMI one out. For you, pick whatever is comfortable for your setup. I have the HDMI cable in my hand. I just plug it into that socket that I went ahead and uncovered. I like to leave the other ports covered so it looks nice. That's what the DC barrel plug from the eFreesia 120 watt power supply adapter should look like. It doesn't matter which port you plug it into. I prefer to put it on the bottom. And just wait right here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and put a Thunderbolt 2 ethernet adapter. So I don't really like running things over Wi-Fi. As far as I can tell, there's no issues with it. And you guys know what an ethernet cable looks like. So pretty much that's all I have to do, nothing else. It's ready to go. I hope to benchmark a couple other things soon. Maybe Witcher 3, CSGO. I do play Dead by Daylight. I will benchmark that soon. If there's any other games you'd like me to benchmark, just let me know. I'd love to hear from you guys. And thanks for watching the video.